action. Hi everyone, um, I'm Savannah. I'm Alice. And this week we're talking about week 12, food, class and the rise of cosmopolitanism. How did you enjoy this lecture? I really enjoyed this lecture, just as much as I'm enjoying this almond milk turmeric latte. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's, tea. it's just plain old tea because I don't know, we're not up with the hipster food trends, I suppose. Um, yeah, it was actually it was really interesting um, to get to get thinking about all of all class, how it ties in with like hipsters and bogans, um, as it was described and in food choices. Yeah, and so it did get me thinking about how um, class is not rigidly defined in Australia at all no. um, and it's definitely not anything people like to talk about like in specific like working class and stuff yeah. like as opposed to maybe, maybe other cultures it's much more acceptable but here I think like class is a lot more subtle in Australia um, more understated and yeah. I think like if we reflect upon our own generation like it's more seen in fashion, like food, your hobbies, your leisure, like how you spend your time and I think for us that is really evident, like that's really exposed in people's social media accounts. Oh absolutely. Yeah. It's um, like how you want everyone to perceive yeah, you as opposed to yeah. how you actually yeah. are. It's like idealised almost and yeah. so I think so we're going to answer the first question today which was some class-based food habits in your community and so we're reflecting upon our own generation like you know uni students um and how cafe culture is so prevalent um and how i guess businesses tap into that as a i guess as commodified as being cool yeah, as really. a means of marketing mm. like your own your own food yeah yeah so businesses tap into how um how valuable Instagram is for our generation um, yeah. and like to the point that it's almost a currency for a cafe to make themselves cool to keep up with these hipster trends that like yeah. we want to be involved in to show that we are also cool up there. Yeah, because um, you go into like any trendy cafe in Newcastle, anyone in like the inner west in Sydney, in Bondi, whatever, yeah. all of them will have a chalkboard that's got like like our Instagram, like yep. tag your photo, use this hashtag. Yeah. Um, Win two free coffees if you share. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so it's like a very clever form of like free marketing works a lot in their favor. And then it also as a consumer, you're also like cool because you're able to share with people this like beautiful mm. aesthetic photo yeah. of your meal and like tag the location. Everyone yeah. knows where you've been. And can like identify you as like someone who like knows where the like yeah. the trendy food spots are. Yeah, it's more than just eating as well. Yeah, like absolutely. you are therefore showing that you're cool, you're social, you're you know you're part of this food trend that is exclusive to people, only people who are up with it. And I think like as soon as a food is no longer exclusive and at these expensive cafes and you know, only really seeing it on inst uh, Instagram and suddenly actually well, you can get it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a, a say, yeah, Coles, like no longer cool, no longer um, hip and for the... Yeah, until people. it gets like reinvigorated. Yeah. And the yeah. next new superfood gets discovered yeah. and takes off and then that's like the new cool. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like on that topic of um, like Instagram and social media presence, kind of like revealing it you know, how trendy a person is. Mm. Um, like just like on, on an aside, one of my best friends from high school, when we were telling her that she should get an Instagram, mm. just because, you know, like all of our French friends did. Um, well, you and, have to have one. Well, you have to have one. Yeah. Um, and she always thought Instagram was really stupid just because yeah. she was like, I don't have anything to put on there. I don't take yeah. photos of nice things. Yeah. Um, and so she runs an Instagram that is solely dedicated to the wheat bix that she eats every single morning She's been running it for like two and a half years. And yeah. so I guess in that way, the same, where they're like eating. It's like rebelling almost against that whole trend though. It's like, you yeah, have like to have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like don't take a photo of your boring wheat bakes because that's so commonplace, you know, it's not the cool trend that's yeah, happening. Yeah, you wouldn't put that on. It's, not, it's not cool, it's not aesthetic, but yeah, yeah, I love yeah. that. My old housemate um, had, has celiac disease. Yeah. Um, and whenever we would go out for brunch, or dinner or whatever, she would always be like really embarrassed to have to like oh, tell the waiter, oh. be like, "Is this gluten free?" Yeah, because she because 
because so many people are like, I'm gluten free, but yeah. I don't actually have celiac or gluten yeah. intolerance. It's yeah. just like something that. Jumping on bandwagon of, yeah. of thinking it's um, either healthy or cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she always found it quite embarrassing to have to double check everything was yeah. gluten free. Yeah. But then she said on the on the flip side of that is like supply and demand. I mean, there was more gluten free options for her yeah. to eat, and it makes gluten free food cheaper. Yeah. So, so there are some like, benefits yeah, of the like, trends. Take, like, the, yeah. The good and the bad. I guess like, at the end of the free. day, a nourish ball is going to nourish you with all that kale. So yeah, <laughs> it's okay from a dietitian's perspective. Yeah, if you're eating more vegetables, even benefits. if you just think it's cool, yeah, you're still eating the vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> it's whatever. Veggies Maybe, are cool. Veggies kids. are cool, guys. <laughs> okay, so anyway, to wrap this one up, we thought we'd quickly touch on fusion foods. Yes, that would all be right. Uh, mine that I came up with was when I was in Singapore, I saw sushi burritos, which was just. Didn't really have that much burrito influence. It was just a giant sushi. I suppose the same shape as a burrito, but still yeah. called a sushi burrito. I think I've burrito. seen that a video of it. Delicious. One. I was thinking. I literally saw an article pop up on my Facebook this afternoon for um, a banh mi burger. So like it was a birth. Like, it was in Melbourne, obviously, yeah. the birth of the hipster food trend. Um, and it was yeah a really popular burger joint in Melbourne and a, like a Vietnamese place mm. and have like combined to make this barmy burger. Yep. Um, and then more in more local in Newcastle, I was thinking about the bakery that I work at in Maryville. They were making these huge croissants and so Rascals was using croissants as burger buns Whoa. for like these insane burgers i can't even look crazy, at it They're like crazy. Super sick. yeah <laughs> another one i thought of was like um when you get like pizzas with like lamb tzatziki or like yeah. tandoori pizzas delicious anyway <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to call it uh the end of the video there um I have thanks to for eat something now yeah yum activated kale yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for um, listening to all our interesting points that we always have to say. Um, love to hear what you, if you have any comments in it or we're really interested in anything you have to say, like, comment and subscribe. Bye.